my greatest fears as a northern prepper is having to endure a disaster during the winter time. During the summer months, a crap hits the fan situation is one thing, but if it happens in winter, that makes it twice if not ten times harder to survive. Even though there are some benefits to winter survival as I discussed in this video that you can see here, by and large off-grid survival in the winter with no lifeline would be an onerous and grueling experience. There's a reason why you seldom see winter in apocalypse movies because it would get really boring watching a bunch of people huddled around an ice fishing hole and collecting firewood all day. And all the zombies would be frozen. In the same way, driving in winter is much more complicated. Deep snow, icy roads, and cold conditions are really going to push your vehicle to the limit. And if you live in a region that gets heavy snowfall and the grid is down, who's going to be plowing those roads? Nobody. That means many roads are going to become impassable even if you have one of the best four-wheel drive vehicles money can buy. But you still will have a much better chance if you prepare your vehicle ahead of time. It's still good to have a set of traction boards on deck for situations like this. Chains are a preventative traction device, recovery boards are to get you out of jams like this. Having the proper four-wheel drive vehicle with the proper tires, traction devices, block and tackle and as we're going to demonstrate today, tire chains is going to enable the greatest capability in these conditions, especially if you have to go off-road. I personally am on a mission to turn my truck into an off-road snow piercer of sorts. I chose a full-size truck because of the space, the towing capability, and the payload. An SUV simply isn't big enough to accommodate mine and my family's needs. Modifications that I've done to this truck include a 3-inch lift, 35-inch off-road tires, a winch bumper, and I just recently bolted a Prinsu roof rack. And I currently have a Diamondback tonneau cover which has served me very well over the last 4 years. However, I'm going to be replacing it with a box topper soon. Basically going to the spot where I got stuck and we're going to try to test out the chains to see if the result is any different. I'm hoping it is, otherwise it's going to be A, very embarrassing and 2, very costly. Normal tires are for snowflakes, literally. When times get tough, we got to bust out. The shit hit the fan chains. Let's put them on. Just as a little side note, I wanted to also demonstrate these Catula micro spikes. These came in exceptionally handy on this snow day because the entire road was a skating rink. It's only appropriate to have tire chains for your feet. And I would strongly recommend this level of foot traction device which is kind of a crossover between your usual foot traction and a mountain climbing cramp on. These are built exceptionally tough by a Norwegian company and it only seemed appropriate that if my tires are getting chains then my tires should get chains too. A link for the chains and the Catula micro spikes will be in the description below. Shopping through those links helps support the channel and I do appreciate yes, it. Yes sir! Before this, I've never used chains and I was actually against the idea for many reasons. For starters, they are limited in terms of how fast you can go, meaning that 
you can't easily transition from off-road to on-road and because they are so difficult to put on not necessarily difficult but time consuming it's not practical to be taking these things on and off all the time and they can be an exceptional pain in the butt to install in cold conditions I for one wouldn't want to be putting these on in minus 30 I could do it if I had to but it would be a real pain they're also going to weigh down the truck a lot. These chains that I have here are 80 to 100 pounds. Now the one downside to these chains is that they're really heavy. I mean, they're not heavy individually, but if you get four of them in your truck, that's, you know, an extra 100 pounds that you're carrying around. So that's one of the downsides of them. I've also watched and read many reviews that talk about chains breaking and not holding up to long-term abuse. So I was very reluctant to buy into this idea. I also heard that they didn't work well in slushy or muddy conditions. But I was still curious and I wanted to put this all to the test. So I did some research and I settled on a pair of quick grip security chains that I purchased with my own money. I have no affiliation with the company and I was able to get some tire chains which are appropriately sized to my tires which are all season radials but the thick aggressive tread is geared towards mud and snow. These chains cost around $150 per pair and of course we had to do all four tires. As you can see here, it's also recommended that you use these spider bungees just to keep everything together and minimize play. I had an Instagram follower inform me that I should be putting these bungees hooks out just so they don't puncture the sidewalls of the tire. I think that's a great idea and I'll certainly be doing that in the future. Now just because you have tire chains doesn't mean you're going to be invincible in winter weather. They're going to help you out a lot in numerous conditions. And I would say that it's definitely a worthwhile investment for any vehicle, whether it's four wheel drive or not, especially if you don't have four wheel drive, this is something you may wanna consider because it's gonna be way better than having bare tires. However, just because you have tire chains doesn't mean your vehicle is gonna be invincible to these types of conditions. Not all snow is gonna be created equal. Six inches of snow can be more problematic in the right conditions than 20 inches. It really depends a lot on the temperature, the slushiness of the snow, and whether there's mud and ice involved. But I was pretty impressed right from the get-go with respect to how these performed. I got stuck in here and I slid down into there and it's really hard for people to... I was getting a lot of comments from people who didn't quite comprehend how I could have got stuck here. But I'm not sure if you can... If I can get uh, Saul, my camera guy, to show the slope here. So you can see pretty significant slope okay and then when that when the bottom is ice and the top is you know a foot and a half of snowpack now it's packed down pretty good and that skitter actually took a bit off and since then I think the snowmobilers have been through here a few times so we're gonna give it another shot and see what happens I don't know. Oh.
like that they don't they don't tangle at all you would think that they tangle but they don't they're they're just too big to tangle I guess but in spite of that I'm still gonna put them in individual bags they don't tangle with themselves but they might tangle with each other that's the brand quick grip by security tire chain they get a free plug And I really had to do a lot of searching to find a brand that you know I, I was confident would be durable enough to withstand. And this is heavy ass chains. I mean, you know, there's a lot of them that have kind of weak points, but there's no weir real weak points. It's all chain link. And I would say I was a little doubtful that I needed the bungees, but I'm pretty glad that I got those bungee. And, uh, I think without it, we might have had some issues. Now in slushy conditions, I hear that they don't work that well because what happens is um, the tire just gets all gummed up and it, it starts collecting debris and it collects mud. So the mud clumps onto the chain, you know, so you, the chain doesn't you know it's not exposed again so it's not digging in so that's what I've heard and I could see it happening in certain types of snow this still wouldn't work The best way to support this channel is to support yourself by gearing up at CanadianPreparedness.com, your one-stop shop for premium, high-quality, brand-name products that have been tried and tested by myself and other YouTube gear reviewers. My subscribers save 10% off by using the coupon code SURVIVALPREPPER, all one word in all caps.